That's right. It's time to dive into your running back rankings here. One through 12, your RB ones on the week, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, Derek Henry, Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, and Travis Etienne round out your top six, Aaron. I want to start right there because there's one player in particular. I know the matchup is juicy. Like it's, it's great when you see any player matched up against the Detroit Lions defense, you're like, okay, this is a great matchup. But Travis Etienne this week, coming off of an ankle injury or a, a, a foot injury um, in uh, in week 12. Little concerns heading into week 13. The Jaguars coaching staff has said he should be fine to go. Uh, he, ETN himself said he should be straight. Uh, but the concern for re-injury has to be there and maybe him not being 100%. What's your, what's your concern level heading into uh, – Heading into week 13 for Travis Etienne. You're on mute. Well, I checked in with my Jaguars insider, uh, Vinny Milani, and he indicated that the coaching staff doesn't have real concerns about it, said that it was minor, that he should be good to go. And if he's good to go, then I'm, I'm loving that juicy matchup. We, we saw what he's been able to do uh, over the past you know month or so, even before leaving in that can or before leaving in that Baltimore game, he was, had just a couple of carries, so he didn't really get an opportunity there. Prior to the bye week, he had 11 for 45, three catches on 28 yards uh, through the air, only scoring 10 points. But prior to that, it's been double digits um, heavily for the past six weeks. It's been 14, it's been 18, it's been two 20-point games during that time. We saw the volume uptick when they got rid of James Robinson or towards the end of James Robinson's tenure there, and then the touchdown started coming. He was getting involved in the passing game, and you saw the explosion that people were excited about at the beginning of the season. So when you get a juicy matchup like this at Detroit, who's not very good against the running uh, the running back position, uh, if he's healthy, I think you're okay making that start. I don't think I don't look at this situation and say, okay, Am I questioning whether he's going to be able to be good or not? Um, I know that if he plays and they're giving him opportunities that he's going to produce. So that's really where I'm at. Uh, I try not to take injury into consideration if there's not a real question about the guy. And based on everything that I've read and that I've seen uh, that he should be good to go, I'm not going to show that concern unless I hear otherwise or unless I see something different uh, prior to Sunday. Um, he's going to be up there in my rankings. They're, they're, Detroit Lions are averaging 20 Point six fantasy points a game to the running back position. It's bottom half of the league. Uh, I like the matchup here, and, and I like what the Jaguars have tried to do with ETN since the departure of James Robinson. Yeah, it, when you like, is that when you see that when you see the Lions on your schedule and your in your for your fantasy players, you're like, okay, start them up, load them up, fire them up. Pretty much every Jaguar on the offensive side of the ball is the start for this week, in, including Zay Jones uh, could be a, a spot start, Christian Kirk. Trevor Lawrence. I mean, this Martin shit. Throw in Marvin Jones if you want to. Who knows? Maybe you'll get a touchdown from him uh, against this four. It's a revenge game. It's a revenge game. Who knows? It could happen. He could be in your DFS lineup. Um, but on the other side of things, it's Christian McCaffrey, David Montgomery, Ramondre Stevenson tonight, Saquon Barkley, Kenneth Walker, and Damian Pierce rounding out your top 12. AJ, what did you want to talk about with Damian Pierce? Oh no 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 no! We're good. We're good. I I I just know Damian Pierce had himself a hard go at it last week. I think he'll be better this week. But I know that there's an insider on our panel that has some good stuff to say about Damian Pierce, and I'm gonna let him say he's probably done way more research and way more conversation about Damian Pierce. So I, it's cool. I have another route I can go, and it's a guy we've talked about for a couple of weeks. It's a guy most people probably are okay with and enjoy having in their lineup. And it's going to be David Montgomery against the Packers. I think that's another good spot another good player who you can ex- expect this week to kind of I don't want to say go off but but do you solid uh high in RB2 low in RB1 for sure uh I mean last week 68% of the snaps 14 carries without Justin Fields and everyone thinks if Justin Fields comes back well now David Montgomery's going to get no work that's not true uh it just gives them another person that they have to think about it gives them a read option that they have to think about and might actually allow David Montgomery to break out again uh he's actually got into the passing game as well and with Khalil Herbert on IR, David Montgomery's a guy that you need to take advantage of the extra work that uh, he's getting at this point in time because, once again, he's that guy in that backfield. And, and we talked about going down the stretch how much David Montgomery's usage normally ticks up during this time of year. So um, I, I like your spot with David Montgomery sitting there at eight in your rankings. Uh, I think he has a very solid chance to hit that spot. 
Last time Montgomery played the Green Bay Packers, 15 for 122, added two catches, 14 yards. Didn't even get in the end zone, but he's, and that was with Khalil Herbert there. Uh, played 80% of the snaps and scored 15 fantasy points. I really like that as well. Uh, Montgomery is primed for another stretch run as we head towards the back half of the season. Uh, so if you're if you're one of those people that don't believe in that uh, playoff guy, uh, he's done it for two years straight. It looks like it could be a third year straight. So go get David Montgomery if you can. If you already have him, good luck because he's probably going to score a lot of points for you. So you're probably going to reap those benefits. Uh, I agree. David Montgomery, top 10 play for me this week, perhaps top 10 play for, for the next coming weeks. And I don't even think that matters whether Justin Fields is back or not. And by the way, I do think right. Justin Fields is back on Sunday. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of chatter about Justin Fields and whether or not he's going to play. We'll talk about him uh, when we get to our injury report. Uh, but, Aaron, I know we normally don't really talk about the number one on your rankings or even really uh, like the, the hot type of matchups for certain players. But similar to what I was talking about with Travis Etienne, when you see the Houston Texans on your schedule, you think, okay, start up, load up every one of your players, uh, including your number one running back this week, uh, Nick Chubb, who's got the Texans. Uh, it, it, all the talk around that game is surrounds it surrounds Deshaun Watson against the Texans, and that's where that's where everyone is around. But uh, the running back position against the Houston Texans re- is really where that you're going to get the most fantasy value, I think, uh, on, on Sunday because of game script and because of what whatever what what the game is going to end up turning out to be turning out to be. You talk about the Texans passing uh, passing defense. Stopping quarterbacks, limiting quarterbacks. Obviously, it doesn't show when it comes to like who wins and loses the game because everyone has a good day in real life against the Texans. But when it comes to fantasy, it seems like the running back position is where it it uh, you see the most success. Aaron Nick Chubb against the Texans. Do you think what what do you have to say to the fantasy managers that are concerned about it being a Deshaun Watson day over a Nick Chubb type of day? Can it be both? Uh, it can be, but there has to be some concern there. I, and I think this is probably the game where there is concern. And I know I have them ranked high because you look at the matchup. The matchup is is juicy. It's probably the best matchup of the week of any player going against any team. The Texans allowing 27 uh, point fantasy points to the running back position. And Nick Chubb, well, what does he do? When he gets volume, he runs well. If you look at his course of his season, the days where he's lacked the touches, the 12 carry day, the uh, 11 carry day and the 14 carry day, those are his lowest outputs of the season. And it's because they're not giving him the volume when he's gone over 15 touches. He's produced. He's been RB one a number of weeks. He's been RB top five running back on the, over the course of the season. Um, So when he consistently gets the volume, he consistently puts up the fantasy value. Yes. Deshaun Watson is back. I expect Deshaun Watson to want to throw the ball. I expect that the Cleveland Browns want to get Deshaun Watson an opportunity to show what he's capable of. And then we talked about it the other day. This is, I don't want to say it's a revenge tour for Deshaun Watson, but the quickest way to put some of the off the field issues to rest is by producing on the field. And despite how we may feel about it personally, from a societal standpoint, whether he did right, whether he did wrong, whether he's guilty, not guilty, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is if you go out as an athlete and you perform, those talks become less and less and less over time. And the next thing you know, Deshaun Watson goes and wins the Super Bowl. Guess what we're talking about again? We're talking about what happened, but how he overcame adversity and how he, and it's in a more positive light. So I think that's got to be in his mind. So I do think he's going to take this opportunity to try and start that conversation shifting from what he did to what he's going to do now. And, uh, and that could start Sunday, especially playing the Texans, which is his old team. So there's there's some slight concern about do they throw the ball more, especially at the beginning, and then it gets it does get out of hand or it doesn't get out of hand and the game script has to change. But Nick Chubb is great. Like Nick Chubb is great. So if he gets the opportunities, he will score. Now, where does that mean? Where does that leave Kareem Hunt? Now, I know, and a spoiler alert, he's not in your top twenty-four running backs, and Kareem Hunt has been bad for fantasy as of late or throughout this season, I should say. But now you get to Sean Watson, who you just said you think they're going to air it out more. And I also think with this coaching staff, you're going to see them also recognize the fact that. For Deshaun Watson to be successful moving forward, you're going to have to let him ball out and and put everything behind him, like you said. And with that, it, it's more passing. And and the passing running back is Kareem Hunt. Do you see Nick Chubb getting more involved in the passing game and 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 Kareem Hunt falling back even further, or do we start to see a resurgence from Kareem Hunt to finish out the year? 
I don't think so. I'm still fading Kareem Hunt. Um, one thing that Deshaun Watson and uh, Jacoby Brissett have in common is the fact that they want to push the ball down the field. That's been kind of the detriment of Kareem Hunt is he's not getting those check down opportunities that he was getting with Baker Mayfield or even some of the, you know, the quarterback prior uh, when Baker has been out. Deshaun Watson wants to go down the field. We saw the connection he had in Houston with Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins and, the, and those guys. And now you get Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones who can go down the field. Uh, I think this is more about the quarterback play and what they're capable of. And that's why it's hurting Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt's not going to run the ball very much because they know the better running back is Nick Chubb. He's only seeing five carries a game over the last three weeks. And he hasn't scored in double digits in, in four weeks. That includes the bye week. Um, I, I think that you're going to see the same thing down the stretch. Deshaun Watson is going to look to push the ball down the field. And when there's running opportunities and red zone opportunities, the better player, the better red zone threat is Nick Chubb. I am not comfortable starting Kareem Hunt in any form or fashion, not even as a flex play. I think his floor is too low, as we've seen three weeks ago when it was 2.9. And I don't think his ceiling's high enough as his ceiling this year outside of week one has only been 14 points. And that was when he got 11 carries, which I don't think he gets because he hasn't seen that uh, since week eight and only seen that a few times since week six. So um, for me, Kareem Hunt is a fade all the way out. Our RB 34 on the season, I'm staying away. So no matter what the offense looks like, whether they throw the ball more or not, Kareem Hunt being faded uh, by our uh, our guy here. AJ, are you on board with that? You fading Kareem Hunt as well? I just want to get your, your thoughts on that before we Yeah, go I've been fading Kareem Hunt for a while. I kind of wish uh, I would have been smart enough to trade him when I could have. But, uh, you know, I, he's on my bench in a lot of places, and it's going to suck if he does have himself a good day. But – you can't trust it. You know, it's not worth it at this point in time in the season to put him in your lineup with what he's shown you all season. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at your RB twos for the week. You got Joe Mixon at 13. He's coming back from a concussion. Hopefully plays on Sunday. Dalvin cook against the jets. Alvin Kamara, tough matchup against the Buccaneers. Jamal Williams at 16, uh, 17, Ezekiel Elliott, 18, Isaiah Pacheco, uh, 19, Rashad white, Miles Sanders at 20, Tony Pollard, Antonio Gibson, AJ Dillon and Kyron Williams round out your RB twos. Uh, AJ, let's, let's start off with Jamal Williams here at 16. When you look at the, the, the running back group for the Detroit lions, it was all about Deandre Swift. Deandre Swift is supposed to be the guy in this backfield. A lot of hype around him entering the season, a highly invested running back where you highly drafted. Uh, but it seems to be Jamal Williams backfield moving forward. Cause Deandre Swift is playing, right? Am I, am I, am I losing my mind yeah. here? Deandre Swift is in, and, and we're at the point now where we're putting Jamal Williams in a, as a top 24 running back and DeAndre Swift's name isn't even around here. Uh, what, what, what's going on with the Detroit Lions backfield and, and what's your confidence in Jamal Williams and what should fantasy owners really be doing with DeAndre Swift moving forward? It's very interesting because you look at Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift, you could probably call them both the touchdown dependent uh, running backs, but you can probably depend on touchdowns from both of these guys. I mean, Jamal Williams has what 12, 13 touchdowns on the season. Uh, he hasn't, he fell in the end zone three of the last four weeks uh, for the last five weeks. And two of those were multiple times. Um, it's more than likely if they get near the goal line, he's going to get a shot at the end zone. And he normally does with Deandre Swift. They haven't been giving him a lot of the opportunities. It's been about 30, 31%, but he's been finding his way into the end zone and finding a way to score uh, and find double digits. So with this running back, I think kind of what happens, and this is a theory, it hasn't been proven, it hasn't been said. I kind of feel like with DeAndre Swift getting injured week or uh, year in and year out, and where the Lions are sitting, seeing that they have a bright future, but a present that is just kind of working towards being better, and then getting Jamal Williams to show up like they did, I feel like they're letting Jamal Williams, the older back, kind of carry the backfield and carry the load and allow DeAndre Swift to continue to get healthy while still getting some football uh, football under his belt. Still allowing him to play like 30, 31% of the snaps, play it, be NFL ready. So next season when, you know, they believe it's all bets are off and they have to go for the gold, you know, we're hoping and they're hoping that he's 100% healthy and he can kind of pick up where he left off coming into the season. Again, that's a theory. It hasn't been proven. It hasn't been said by anybody. It just kind of seems what's making sense. You don't take a hot hand in Jamal Williams and just put him right back to the bench because DeAndre Swift was – ready to go so to speak and hasn't been able to show it so i i like what they're doing i mean for nfl you split these guys for fantasy it sucks for us because a lot of people don't have both guys you have to make a decision uh but 
more than likely you're going to see these guys fall into the end zone. And I think this week against Jacksonville, they both do have a good shot at doing so. Yeah, I don't know if I feel the same as AJ about liking what they're doing because I think there's the the biggest narrative out there is that Jamal Williams is playing well and he's not. Like the efficiency of Jamal Williams is not very good. He's aver- in in six of his eleven games, he's averaged less than four yards a carry. He literally has been the definition of touchdown dependent. Now, great, he scored thirteen touchdowns, RB twelve on the year. That's that's all fine and dandy. Uh, I'm not saying you can't start him. Obviously, I have him in my rankings for a reason because I know that's what they're going to do with him. They, for whatever reason, um, whether it's injury, whether it's not injury, um, they don't want DeAndre Swift to carry the load. And I, I think that's a telling tell sign that they don't believe he can do that, at least as of right now. Um, maybe next year, maybe it's a future plan. Who knows? But for me personally, I'm a fantasy owner. I don't care. I want to see the better back in the backfield, and that's DeAndre Swift. This is the first week. Week 13 is the first week DeAndre Swift is not on the injury report. So if we see the same thing happen, then it's not about injury. It's not about, oh, he's still battling back from that ankle injury. He's no longer on the injury report. He's close to his 100% as he possibly can be. So if that uptick for DeAndre Swift is not there this week, then it's just a matter of them liking to do what they want to do. And we can liken it back to when Aaron Jones wasn't getting his run or when Javante Williams was splitting carries with Melvin Gordon. Um, Those are the same situations we were getting so frustrated at as fantasy owners, and it's going to continue. Yes, Jamal Williams scores touchdowns. Yes, it's still hard to trust him. Like like I said, he's a top 12 back on the year, but most of his games look like this. 17 for 64, but he scores three times. Uh, but then he has games where it's 24 for 81. Like, I'm sorry, that's not exciting to me. So I don't want to, I don't want a player like that because those touchdown regressions they usually come unless he has a year, which could be, this could be the case. He might be having the year where he goes for 20 touchdowns. And that's very possible based on the way they use him. However, I told you guys down the stretch in the playoffs, those are the guys that will get you four points in the playoffs. 15 carries, 45 yards, and you'll be so pissed off because he has zero, zero volume in the passing game in the past four weeks, five weeks. Literally zero volume. He's had five games this year where he has no targets. He's had every one of his games, all 11 of his games that he's played, he's had less than three or less targets, has had one catch in four games, a two-catch game, a three-catch game, and then the rest have no catches. I don't trust players like this in the playoffs. I would be concerned going forward. But this week, I do like him. I think it's a pretty good matchup against Jacksonville. Um, I do think he finds the end zone because I do think Detroit's going to be able to score. Uh, so you can play him this week. But are you trusting him week 15 against the Jets? No. Am I trusting him week 16 against Carolina? Probably not, even though Carolina's rush defense is not very good. Sometimes they've been able to lock up and play well. Uh, we saw it against Atlanta. And I just, I don't, I just don't trust it. I don't trust it down the stretch, but I do trust it this week, if that makes sense. You, AJ, you going, uh, let's, let's play the game here. Let's, uh, Jamal Williams or AJ Dillon. I'm going Jamal Williams this week. Okay. Jamal Williams or mm -hmm. Antonio Gibson against the Giants. Jamal Williams against the Jaguars. Antonio Gibson against the Giants. I mean, that that's a tough one in my opinion, but I think with the because of the targets in the in the pass game, I might lean Antonio Gibson in that case. Okay, all right. Aaron, Aaron did you have anything to say? I, I, your rankings are it, it, it makes it hard for me to sit, to ask you these questions because of the way your rankings sit. Because you have uh, Gibson at twenty two and Jamal Williams at sixteen. Yeah, that's. But remember what I told you about my rankings. A lot of times I have to take into consideration what I've seen, right? What I've seen from these uh, from these players. Jamal Williams has scored every week. Uh, if I had that lineup decision, could I alter it? Absolutely. I could find myself picking both A.J. Dillon and Antonio Gibson over Jamal Williams, depending on what you need, depending on what you need. I think Jamal Williams is the safer play, which is why he's ranked higher. But if I'm looking for a ceiling, I'm probably taking Antonio Gibson or A.J. Dillon. I actually like A.J. Dillon this week a little bit. Uh, but, you know, there's always that – thing in the back of your mind maybe he goes back to what he was two weeks ago um so i think in this particular instance yeah you rank jamal williams higher but it would not shock me if anybody's taking antonio gibson or aj Dillon over him i'm not arguing that because i know jamal williams is touchdown dependent those other guys are not well aj Dillon's is pretty touchdown dependent but with aaron Rodgers being hurt 
that could change things. They could run a lot more. The checkdowns are going to happen. Um, he might get involved there. And we know what Antonio Gibson's capable of doing out of the backfield uh, in the passing game. So, and you know, I always lean those guys a little bit more than I do the, the touchdown dependent, just running back guys. Yeah. Let me ask you about one other player before we move on to our quarterbacks here, Isaiah Pacheco at, at 18. Now something we've talked about on this show before and, or in the past, and I've been bringing it up as a point has been DJ Reader and his impact on the Cincinnati Bengals defensive line and how it stops the run, how it is very effective, how he's holding that line together. And sometimes that may not show in terms of fantasy, but last week, Derrick Henry, the great Derrick Henry, yes, he had 14.7 points in PPR leagues and full point PPR leagues. But when you look at his numbers, at least on the ground, 17 carries, 38 yards, only averaged 2.2 yards per attempt. It wasn't that great of a day. It really came from that big, that one big passing play for Derrick Henry last week against the Bengals. But for the most part, they kind of limited one of the best running backs in the NFL. Isaiah Pacheco gets that matchup this week as the Chiefs meet the Bengals in a big-time showdown. You've got Pacheco as, a, as RB2 here, Aaron. What are your thoughts going into this game uh, for the rookie running back? Yeah, well, the Tennessee Titans aren't the Kansas City Chiefs, let's be honest. If you're playing against the Tennessee Titans, you're scheming against Derrick Henry. If you're playing the Kansas City Chiefs, you're not scheming against Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, like DJ Reader is nice, but he's not doing it alone. Like that defense was focusing in on Derrick Henry. Uh, this is a situation where you have to focus in on Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes and all the weapons on that offensive side of the football. Pacheco, right now, Jarek McKinnon's banged up. I think Pacheco's been, you've seen the opportunities and volume go up and up and up for him. We saw 15 carries last week. We saw 22 carries this past week. Uh, he got in the end zone finally. I think that's a big deal. Um, this is about playing in an offense that is just fantasy friendly. Um, and, and when you're the guy that's going to get the bulk of the carries, you're likely to get some red zone opportunities uh, because they're often in the red zone. And he, if he gets in the end zone, he'll have enough work to make it a rel fantasy relevant day. Um, again, RB2. Uh, remember, Cincinnati is still averaging, giving up almost 20 points a game to the running back position. Ronald Jones, I'm sorry, I don't trust him in that backfield. If Jarek McKinnon ends up being out in this one, I think they're going to lean even more heavily on Isaiah Pacheco, maybe even in a little bit in the passing game. Um, I like what I've seen from him. I like the way he runs, but more importantly, I like being in the Kansas city offense that is fan that is fantasy friendly, regardless of how good the Cincinnati Bengals defense has been. Kansas city is going to score and they are going to put up yards and they're going to put up points because that's what Kansas city does. Yeah. I think that Isaiah Pacheco is, is, a. Uh... I, I don't. I, you talk, we talk about the running back position all the time with the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's like what it, it was Clyde at one point. And then they throw in Jarek McKinnon. I think Isaiah Pacheco was the most talented back out of out of this group, and I think that it's going to show uh, in these games. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I have a concern though. I, I know where I know where the Cincinnati Bengals defense ranks in terms of uh, points allowed to the running back position, uh, 13th on the year. Um, but just something in my mind tells me that this might not be a good day for Isaiah Pacheco. I, that's just. In my mind, I, I just have that feeling. I considered him as one of my players I didn't like uh, for, for fantasy matchups. But when you look at it statistically, it's hard to back those numbers up because of where the Bengals sit in terms of the running back position. But really, all I could say is what they did to Derrick Henry last week, aside from that big-time passing play. And that's in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, okay, if Derrick Henry can get that big-time passing play in one and break one open, what do you think Isaiah Pacheco can do with Patrick Mahomes throwing him the ball, if that's going to be the case for this offense, which I trust a little bit more, which is why I didn't put him in my uh, my positions or my players to avoid. 